when I was about eight, seven or eight years old, <clears throat> back in Florida, my uh, my dog one morning about five o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> my dog went totally crazy, was ranting and raving, and and waking the whole neighborhood up, and so I had to get up and go see what the dog what was wrong with the dog. And I went outside on the back porch, and <clears throat> between the wooden fence and the garage wall, the wall of the garage, my dog had cornered uh, uh, what I thought and what I, uh, and what I have said in the past <clears throat> was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a small one, looked like a baby T. Rex, uh, but upon further examination, I found. Uh, exactly what it was that I saw, and if you're seeing it yourself, I, I, then I, you will. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the picture now. <clears throat> it's a gallimimus. Yes, exactly, and uh, and so that's what I saw. But as a kid, and, and and it's been a long time since I saw it, so I just assumed it was a baby T. Rex. Well, it looks a lot like one, but oh, sure, of course, as a kid yeah. you'd think that. What? Let me ask you a question. This is, is it light out? Are you able oh, yeah. to see, you're able to see well. Oh, no, no, it's an early morning. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. All right. And, uh, and people was, mostly was still asleep. And my dog went, went, went crazy. And so my dad told me, go out and keep that, you know, shut, shut that the dog, dog out. Shut the dog out. Yeah. And so I went outside and I saw this, this uh, little dinosaur creature. How tall and was it at the head, about, in the was, shoulder? It, I, I, I was Hard on the guess. porch. I'm looking down at it. I would say it's a probably about uh, two and a half to three foot high, two and a half to three foot. <clears throat> and uh, and it was it was snapping at the dog because it was kind of like a standoff. The dog had it, uh, you know, it cornered so it couldn't get away. Uh, but it wasn't. The dog's not getting that close to it, and this thing is not getting that close to the dog. And so they just kept snapping at each other, and the dog's barking. And so I ran back in and told my dad that uh, you know we've got a dinosaur in our backyard. <laughs> and so he gets up and goes out and says, "Well, I'll be damned. There is a dinosaur in the backyard." And he so, saw it. Okay, he got to see it. So there's validation yeah, so for it. Yeah, he got you. to see it yeah. too. And so. By that time, of course, our neighbors who lived very close to us were all awake. And so my dad called my, a neighbor two houses down who were very close friends with us. <clears throat> and he was a gun enthusiast. And so my dad told him, come over here quick and bring a gun. And so uh, so he came over. And by that time, there were other neighbors that were coming down our driveway, coming into the backyard to see what was going on. And so there's quite a few people in the in the backyard. And were they seeing and, it? It was still oh there? yeah oh yeah yeah everybody was standing there watching it, and the dog was keeping it uh, you know keeping it from going anywhere because there was a big wall of our of our, our, our garage and then there was a heavy uh, wooden uh, fence and so the thing was blocked in and the dog would not let it out. And so uh, lots of our neighbors come by, and they were standing looking at it. And then finally, our next door neighbor came over with a gun, and and he said, "You know, it's too bad we couldn't just capture this thing. You know, my God, can you imagine what uh, what you can make uh, capturing this thing?" And uh, and my dad decided, "No, I don't want this thing captured. I don't want it dead because it might really." injure or hurt somebody or children in the neighborhood and there's no way you're going to capture this thing so so uh, our neighbor did shoot it and then and, uh, and the dog got quiet and uh, there was a there was newspaper i remember uh, just as a little kid but i remember there was newspaper people came and the police uh came into our backyard and they saw the animal and and then all the men were standing around talking about it I went back inside, and so all I know is that I saw a uh, a dinosaur of sorts in my backyard, and and I've said that before. Well, well, Jordan, uh, I, I, what city were you living in at this time? Pensacola. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, and this... and see, my our house was uh, we were about six blocks 
from the bay, which opens out into the Gulf of Mexico, and there were huge ships coming in from Brazil, from South America, from uh, uh, you know, from uh, the, uh, from you know, from South and Central America would come into our ports at, Pen- at Pensacola. We had a huge seaport there, and so a lot of banana boats and that kind of those kind of uh, cargo ships would come in. Obviously, this thing must have gotten involved, you know, in a, in, in the picking up all these uh, fruits and stuff, and this thing got in, in, involved in it. And, and then when it parked, it got off and uh, ended up in my backyard. <laughs> I don't well, there, know those are carnivores, uh, I would think. I, I don't know. I don't know. But Was uh, it hissing? Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of biting and hissing. Um yeah it wasn't it wasn't a low like you like you hear the dinosaurs but it was kind of like a high uh, uh hissing right um a growling i would say a high pitched growling and uh and and it kept trying to bite the dog to scare the dog what off what color was it uh i don't even remember it's just uh, it's, you know i would think probably the color that the picture is uh-huh. is just about just about the same, but uh, well, that's I pretty just, uh, pretty amazing. Now, uh, we're, we're, the the well, amount what, of what I what I <laughs> think is amazing is the damn thing would show up in my backyard. <laughs> it's all your fault, Jordan. It always is. Yep. <laughs> I'm I mean, wondering uh, if these uh, aren't. In, in, say it in, again. I'm wondering if these aren't endemic to Florida with all the the, the swampland and backland and. Well, that's true too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's a lot of swamp area in, in in northwest Florida where I'm from. Lots of it. I mean, and some you know, some of that stuff goes way back into what I you know what I've seen. Right. That looks like not just swamp but jungles. Well, they have the uh, the the Florida version of Bigfoot there. Uh, oh yes. Oh yeah. It, it smells bad. Uh, it's got a very yep. bad odor about it. Yep. And uh, so I've seen, uh, but so I'm just one of the few people that's seen that actual dinosaur of sorts in my backyard. Well, they're still around. It, it makes sense that some survived, and there have been, as you know, numerous reports of uh, pteranodons and pter- pterodactyls flying that people have seen. No, oh, yeah. no, no mistaking those. And there, in fact, if you do a search for pteranodon, starts with a P. P T E R A D O N uh and hit images you'll see photographs of these things here today flying around and they uh they survived no doubt about it yeah and as uh there's some actual tourists were in Mexico filming some old uh, uh old uh, temple <clears throat> and this gallimas uh creature comes running out and they got it on tape so, the same thing uh, a gallimimus yeah, yeah, and, and the thing comes running past them, and they got the thing on. They got the thing on tape. For those of you who don't don't uh, have a computer right now, uh, we'll put well, the picture up. And it looks like the animals in that uh, movie about the island where they had dinosaur park. I forget the name of the film now. Oh, wait, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those yeah, the, the two uh, the two legged kind. They were inside. There were two of them, I think, and they were. But those yeah, were yeah. bigger. This was a smaller version. But yeah, this, this one a small version. has uh, yeah. two large, very muscular back legs and two very thin and almost useless-looking front legs. And yeah. then it has a long neck and a long tail for balance. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, so I'm just I'm just. What happened that, to know. it, Jordan? You know, you could have put this thing on ice and made a lot of money with it. Dad wasn't a merchandiser or a marketer, I guess. <laughs> no, obviously not. <laughs> He was uh, he was pretty perturbed at just having this thing in the backyard. But um, uh, again, the only thing of any real interest to me is the fact that why did it come into my backyard? I mean, well, I, somebody sent it there. Go find <laughs> Maxwell and bother him. Yeah, and, and scare the P-Wads out of the whole family. So That's anyway, nice. but um, I, I don't know if I said anything about this. I I tend years to think ago we talked about it long ago. But yeah, not not but, in great detail. But uh, there's something else I was going to talk about in relation to that. But I'm, but my gut feeling, as I've already talked about it, 
with you. And that was a time that back in um, back in eighty nine, about yeah, about nineteen eighty nine ninety mm-hmm. uh, in Los Angeles. Um, uh, it had had a, a, a rainstorm for two or three days, and so I knew that the air would be clear, and so I went up to uh, Griffith Park Observatory mm-hmm. uh, real early in the morning. I got there about 6.30, and they opened at 6.30 or something like that, and I drove up to the observatory, and there was zero, nobody there. I was the first person there, and nobody showed up for another hour or two. Uh, but I was uh, I was up at Griffith Park one morning after it had rained, crystal clear skies, and roaming around the observatory uh, by myself. And I went out to an observation deck uh, overlooking all of Los Angeles. And out in the east, way out in the east, I would say maybe 40 to 50 miles out, uh, there was extremely heavy white clouds. All around, and especially over LA, but the, but way out in the, in the east, I could see, and for some reason, standing on that observation deck, I don't know why, but my eye caught a little tiny black speck in that cloud in the east, and immediately I thought to myself, anything that I can see, even as a dot from 50 miles away, has got to be big. And so I just trained my my eye on it and watched it, and I noticed it was starting to get bigger, so it was coming my way. And now I was totally intrigued. And I'm up there at Griffith Park by myself and with no camera, and I'm just watching this black uh, uh, dot moving and getting closer and closer. And as I said, the clouds overhead were very heavy white clouds. And as this thing came over, it was moving like, I would say, 10 times faster than 747s because I would go out to the airport and watch the big planes come sure. in. But, yeah. but from way out, watching the planes come in, it takes, you know, it takes a long time because they're not moving that fast, even though they are moving fast, but not that fast. So, But this thing was really moving. This thing was moving way quick. And uh, and it shot over the top of my head, going out toward the Pacific, going out to Santa Monica and over the Pacific. And as it flew over my head, as I said, there were heavy white clouds, so there was no doubt about what I was seeing. It was a pterodactyl, and it was very big. It was huge. Okay, and well, had, that's what I was just talking about. So you, you yeah. did see one. And it was, yeah, and I saw this thing, and as it came over, one thing, it was not flapping its wings. It was moving so fast, it was just gliding, and so it probably caught some current in the air or sure. whatever. Thermal. It wasn't, it wasn't flapping its wings, it was just sailing fast. I mean, I would say four or five times faster than if you watch it. How interesting. You wouldn't that, think that they would go that fast. No, no, this thing was moving. I mean, huh. I've watched, you see, I've been up to the observatory so many times, and I've watched a big 747, 757s come in. Right. And, you know, it takes a few minutes to just sit and watch them as they're coming in. But this thing, from out from like 40 to 50 miles away, it was there in no time. And as it went over my head, it was enormous, and it shot straight out towards Santa Monica to the ocean. How big so do you think I, it was, Jordan? You say enormous. How big? I, I, well, I've been uh, and uh, up there so many times and seen seven forty sevens. Yeah, this thing was at least that big. That's a huge was, wingspan. Huge. Oh, God! It was huge. It was enormous, and and so as it passed over, it was going quickly. It looked just like a pterodactyl. You know, it had, it had all the features. And so, but what what was really startling is I watched it go out toward the Pacific, uh, toward Santa Monica. There was a heavy, heavy cloud cover over the Pacific, uh, and just that one section uh, coming into uh, Santa Monica, not over the whole ocean, but just a very click, uh, a very heavy cloud cover. 
uh, coming in toward Santa Monica. And as this thing passed over me, I knew it's, it's heading for Santa Monica, it's heading for the ocean. Uh, out of that cloud cover over Santa Monica came five more pterodactyls. And as they came out, they were following each one. They had a leader, and he came out. Next one followed out, and that one came out. And ultimately, there were five following each other. And they <laughs> formed a circle around Santa Monica, over the city of Santa Monica. They, they, uh, they, they formed a circle and sailing around. Well, when this one that was right over my head... It, fell, it went right toward that circle and fit right into the circle, and now there's six of them circling Santa Monica. And then one of them broke loose from the circle and started back into the cloud mass, and each one behind him followed uh, the same way until the last one, the sixth one, went back into the cloud mass, and they were gone. And so talk about something truly off the wall and lunacy. But that's what I saw. I'm not validating anything. I'm just telling you what my eyes saw. I saw six pterodactyls, wow. one wow. right over my head, wow. and five more right circling over Santa Monica. So I don't well, know. Well, they how probably they, were uh, friends of that Gallimimus that your neighbor shot. Yeah, right? probably so. I don't that's know. That's really I, weird, Jordan. I, you know, two things come to mind. One, obviously. If the first one that went over your head was hungry, he could have picked you up. No problem. Well, uh, probably. <laughs> uh, number two, we've been many times into this situation where we we think that our visitors have the ability to make us see what they want us to see. Precisely. That's exactly right. And that's why I've questioned my own uh, integrity on this. Maybe these were discs and they weren't pterodactyls. That's, that's, that's very possible. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not validating anything gotcha. I tell you. I'm no, no, I got it. I got what it. my eyes saw. Um, say it again. Wow. That's, that's fascinating. That's a wonderful yeah, I'm, story. Uh, yeah, I'm just telling you what I saw. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, Another thing happened to me when uh, I was about 26 years old. I had a new uh, uh, Ford Mustang, and that thing was a real powerful car. And So one day I was out in the San Fernando Valley, and I was going east to west, and I, uh, I was on a main, main uh, street, and I came up to another main street crossing it. And uh, did I tell you this before? I don't know. Okay, well, uh, so I pull up at the up at the light. Not enough information yet. Go ahead. Okay, so I pull up at the red light, but I'm in the slow lane, and and on my left is another car, and that's in the middle lane, mm -hmm. and then there was a truck in the turn lane, and we're all waiting for the red light to change. Uh -huh. And so when the light changed, I hit the gas. I mean, I took off. I hit the gas. <laughs> And uh, and when I did, I hit the steering wheel because my car locked up. The, the transmission just plain locked. And when it locked, I hit the steering wheel and knocked the breath out of me. And the moment I I hit the the moment I I hit the steering wheel, a car shot through in front of me uh -huh. and had run the red light uh -huh. and was going at least sixty miles an hour minimum. Yeah. This thing passed me so quick. Uh, it was just a flash in the blink of an eye. And if my car had gone another 10 to 12 feet, that car would have hit me on the driver's side doing 60 miles an hour. And, of course, I wouldn't be here talking to you. But all of a sudden, my, my, uh, my transmission locked. And the moment it locked, the car shot past me, and my and my transmission unlocked. So it was only locked for a, a, a fraction a fraction of a second. But that fraction of a second made the difference between that car missing me by hmm. a few feet, and 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 yeah 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 okay and, and the the. You weren't wearing seat belts, I don't think. No, no, not at all. This was this was back in nineteen sixty. That's why why you were thrown into the steering wheel. I got it. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay, I remember that story from before, but that was even more vivid. Uh, uh, not even not even time to register the maker model of the car. Uh, no, I, I, I it went by so fast. I was uh-huh. a big car. Yeah, and it was really traveling. Wow. Well, somebody's watching over you, no doubt about uh, it. I think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we will be right back with Jordan. If you go to guests and look under Jordan's name, you'll see the little dinosaur. What Jordan saw as a boy, it says. <laughs> Click on that and you'll see it. It may, it might be a different species. I don't know how big Gallimimus was, but it was, that's how it looked. All right. A common configuration for dinosaurs. All right, very good. Now the first guest tonight we had on was has a new book coming out about synchronicities. Very interesting. There, now we've talked about synchronicities before, mm-hmm. and uh, that's a, that's a big subject. But what other stories have you tonight? Well, uh, quite a few. Let's see. Uh, back in the mid ninety, uh, uh, not nineties, two thousand, and I don't remember exactly what. Uh, I I can't even exactly remember when this happened. It has mm-hmm. to have been like two thousand six, two thousand seven, maybe. I um, I was staying with a, a friend of mine. And he was giving me a room to to live in, and 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 I was storing all of my possessions, my boxes of books and videos and masters and everything I yeah, had in yeah, the world. Yeah. And so I was storing up in his uh, his storage room. And uh, then he uh, sold the house, and so he had to move. Well, that means I got to move. And I had no money and no place to go. I had zero, nothing. And out of nowhere, I get a, uh, I get a phone call from a friend who's been you know, following my work for many years, and he had come to see me two or three times from uh, Panama, from the country of Panama. And he would come up to L.A. to see me. And so he called and said, uh, he asked me, so what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm looking to go live under a bridge right now because I, I have to move at the end of the month. And I have no place to go and no money if I did get there. And so he said, well, then come live with me. I have an extra bedroom. You come live with me in Panama. Well, it's either that or sleep under a bridge. So I said, okay. And he said, I'll I'll take care of the expense of bringing everything down and getting you down here. And so he did. He paid for everything to be shipped. So what we took all of, I don't know, I had about 35 or 40 bank boxes of my video masters, uh, audio masters, all of my research books and just everything, everything I have in the world, I had in boxes sealed up, and so we took it down to the shipping company in downtown L.A., and I flew down to uh, Panama to live. And yeah, I remember nice. that. It was a yeah. high rise. You... Yeah, it was a high rise, and uh, and my friend was very, very decent, very nice, and he was very uh, generous with me. And uh, and so it took about six weeks for my for all my stuff to get down to Panama because it was coming on a on a ship. And so I finally got to Panama, and they called us one day and they said that all of your stuff has arrived. It's on the shipping dock, ready to be taken tomorrow morning. We'll, we'll be delivering everything tomorrow morning. Great. And so the next morning, about eight o'clock, uh, we get a phone call. <laughs> from the shipping company, and they said, uh, where all of your stuff was sitting on the loading dock ready to be delivered, uh, it caught fire this morning, and it's totally gone, everything. It just melted into the concrete, and it's gone. So that's it, and too bad, and goodbye, and good luck. <clears throat> and so I lost everything, totally. Everything I owned in the world was gone, including my clothes, all of my Did you go down to the the scene of the fire? Say it again. Did you go down to the scene of the fire? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And it was, was anything around? Well, Jordan was anything around it burned? Uh, it, yeah, it was. It was a lot of stuff was burned all around it. But, okay. Uh, but but they said that the center. Uh, you know, we were talking to the firemen, the police, and they said that the fire started right where my stuff was. 
And mm. so somehow or another, uh, the fire started. Now, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's, uh, that is, uh, that's no coincidence. Quite... No coincidence. No. Somebody no, no torched it. This is sick. It, it didn't start uh, at all the other warehouses, which are tons of them down there in, mm -hmm. in Panama. No, it happened in the one my stuff was in, yeah. and it happened in that one particular spot where my stuff was. I lost everything I own in the world, period. So eventually I ended up um, coming back to America and just giving up, and that's why I dropped out of scene, uh, dropped out of the scene for a while. Because I had nothing, owned nothing, and got nothing, and I had to stay with friends who give me a room to live in until I could get back on my feet. And so, you know, that's that has happened to me quite a few times, losing everything. And I, I and and when it does, when it happens, I just keep going because I figure I'm supposed to do something. I'll just keep on going. And hopefully, maybe one day something will happen that I can do my work without being, uh, you know, without right, losing right. everything, you know. So that's a that's a I can't even imagine that feeling. That's a horrible feeling. Oh, it, uh, because there was so many documents yeah. and and videos and and DVDs and research documents and and you know one of a kind books. And documents from governments about yes, me, yes. documents from important uh, people around the world who had written me, uh, highly placed individuals who had written me personal letters. Everything was gone forever. So, but like I said, I, I've lived through it all. I'm still here trying to stay alive and do what I do. And uh, we only we got a couple of minutes. I want to tell you about. Oh, we got uh, uh, that uh, fourteen minutes. Yeah, good. I was back in 1985. Uh, I in North Hollywood. I'm driving down the street and I pull up behind a car which is waiting for the red light. And the light turns green, and the guy was preoccupied, either uh, uh, listening to the radio or whatever he was doing, and so he didn't move. So I just backed the car up quietly. I'm not going to blow the horn. I don't <laughs> do that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I pulled around him, but then I put my foot to the floor, and I took off, and uh, it scared him. It scared him. He wasn't, you know, I don't know, he was probably half asleep, and it scared him when I took off like that, and it angered him. And so I, I saw, and I looked in my rearview mirror, and I saw him with his fist out the out the window shaking his fist at me. And so I knew that uh, I have not made a friend here. <laughs> and he took off. He took off after me. And I saw a lot of brown smoke coming out from behind his car. So I knew he was putting his foot to the floor. Right. And so he was gaining on me. And I was speeding. I didn't want to speed, but I was speeding to get away from him. And and Jeez. I came to I came to a overpass and to a freeway overpass. And there were two red lights, one on this side, one on the other. I ran those red lights. Uh, I saw that it would be safe, so I did. I ran the two red lights, thinking that he would stop and that would give me a few moments to get away. But he ran the red lights also. Now, who was so this guy I, again? Who was this guy? I have no idea. You never, no, never an identifier. Okay. No, no. And so then I came to the corner of this of another main street, and I I ran the red light and turned right. I couldn't go through it; too much traffic. But I saw that I could turn right and run the light, huh. and so I did. And so I, I, as I turned, I put my foot to the floor, and now I was heading toward the main street in town, which will be a big cross street. About two blocks further would be a main cross street. Wait, what city town. are we in now? We're in we're in North Hollywood. Okay. And uh, and um, and Toluca Lake area. Right. And as I was heading toward the 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 main street, two blocks away, I could see his car wide open. I could see the brown smoke. This right is nuts. There. This guy is crazy. He's he's uh, he's not giving up. The original road rage. I don't know what he's going to do or what he thinks he's going to do, 
but uh, but you know, but it's a very situ- it's a very difficult and dangerous situation because this guy is crazy. And so, as I drove by, I was going very fast, but I realized that the cross street that was coming up in a half a block was so uh, busy, a main cross street, mm-hmm, I could mm-hmm. not run that light mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what I was going to do because I'm not even going to be able to make a right turn quick because it's just too much traffic. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. All I knew is this guy was coming up on me fast. And as I passed, there was a Greyhound bus station on my right, a small one, one of the little small Greyhound bus stations. a local. A local one. And there was a school bus. Uh, they they parked a lot of big buses uh, there on the side street, mm-hmm. uh, but there was a school bus right there on that little side street, uh, and, and and as I came up onto the uh, the bus uh, the bus station, this a uh, school bus, big yellow school bus, all of a sudden backed out wide open. He put his foot to the floor, and backed out. Instantaneously, he backed out, and when he did, he almost hit me. I was, I was even with him as I saw him coming out <laughs> wide open, and I just missed him by a foot or two. And when he pulled out wide open and stopped, the car that was chasing me hit the side of that bus wide open. And when he hit the bus, the bus almost turned over and skidded around, and the car ricocheted off the bus and shot across the street and hit a telephone post. And this guy was really traveling. So when that hit, when that hit, when he hit that bus, he ricocheted like a bullet and shot straight across and hit a telephone pole. I was so nervous, but I finally stopped the car before that bad intersection. And I was shaking. I didn't realize what had happened. All I know is I was safe, and he's he's no longer following me. So then I drove around the cir- I drove around the block, and I came back to the same place. But I parked the car about a half a block before the accident uh-huh. Uh-huh. and walked up to the accident. So by that time, there were people all over, cars and people standing around. And uh, and the poor guy, the driver of the bus, kept saying to everybody, as I, you know, he was telling everybody as I was coming up, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And and I thought to myself, incredible. He when? he's saying, I don't know why I did that. And uh, and so I walked over to the car, which was now wrapped around. Uh, the telephone post. I walked up to it. The guy had the uh, driving post, the steering post, in his chest, all the way into his chest. It was bleeding from all around the the puncture, but also his mouth and nose was bleeding, some of it out of his eyes, but he was bleeding profusely and laying there against the uh, against the dash. With the, uh, with the with the thing buried in his chest, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I just shook my head like you know this was not a very smart idea for you, and uh, and he just looked at me, and then I walked off and got went back to my car and and left, but that was an incredible situation where all of a sudden out of nowhere a bus backs out and just. Saves me in the, in the nick of time. Somebody well, there's some put, major uh, energies at work there. Uh, oh, incredible! <laughs> totally incredible stuff. And, wow! Uh, when he looked at you, was there any emotion in his eyes of any kind? No, no, no. He was just looking. Uh, uh, he was in his last and final moments. There's no doubt in my mind. That's what it was. He was mm-hmm. his last moments of life. And he knew he was dying, and he knew he was going to die, and so he was just looking at me, and I stared right back at him. I looked him in the eye, mm-hmm. and he looked at me, <clears throat> and I shook my head, as if to say, you know, that wasn't very smart of you. Right. And and I stood there for a moment, looking at him, and he just looked at me, and then I walked off, and that's it. So. Wow. <clears throat> wow, another I, amazing vignette. I don't know how 
And then that poor guy uh, walked past, and he's still out in the street talking to people. He said, I don't know why I did that. <clears throat> well, right. I know why he right. did it. Right, right, of course. Somebody made him. Of course, of course. So that just tells me that there's there's a higher power that can intervene in your life in a blink of an eye if it chooses to. That's the big and, that's the uh, big qualifier if it chooses to or was it directed to do so and by whom or what. There's several levels to this. That's a really a vivid story. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and, yeah Dude, and people have been after you many times. Many times. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. And and we we know I'm not going to go <laughs> into it now, but it it it's it hadn't stopped. Many times I have I have been saved from death uh, in a split second, in, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a fraction of a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something happened, and 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 I came out of it alive. And I've had way too many experiences like that, so it tells me somebody wants me alive. Right. <clears throat> somebody wants right. me here. To oh do yeah. What I do. Yeah, so, you still got work to do. Yep. So I. I mean, I don't. I, I, I've said so many times. I'll say it again. I don't know really. I don't understand how the universe works. I don't know what God is. I don't know what synchronicity is. All I know is what I do, and mm -hmm. what I do, mm -hmm. I am given to do. It's not that I have sat down and figured out what I want to do. It's just who I am, and that's what I do. So I just go along with it. Whatever my destiny right. is, I just right. do it. Right. You know, I mean, you just do what you do, and I do what I do. <clears throat> so, but I have had many times when somebody stepped into my life to save me. And uh, anyway, um, what else? Uh, the car, and now that we only have a few more minutes, I'd like to say too also, uh, talking about the pterodactyls, when uh -huh. I was in Zurich, when uh -huh. I was in Zurich, Switzerland, <clears throat> I was invited to come to Zurich, Switzerland by an extraordinary, yes. extremely uh, uh, powerful person. Right? Yeah. And I'm not going to talk about it, but yeah. but uh, so I was I lived there for about uh, I think it was a, a month and a half, so six weeks, no seven weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in Zurich in a very very incredible five star hotel in Zurich, up in the mountains. And every morning I would go out on the balcony, and there's a phone out there, and I would call for breakfast, and they immediately <laughs> would, would have, yeah, yeah, it was a five star hotel, yeah, and yeah. they immediately would come up and uh, and have uh, everything there, and they would fry your eggs and, and, and cook right there for you uh, when you're sitting there, and pour oh, your. Oh, they had a little portable uh, uh, <clears throat> entree preparation cart that they'd roll in and cook it right oh, yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was it had fire. <laughs> and it had gas, and they would turn on the gas. Unreal. And fixing your, your oatmeal yeah, and, yeah. and eggs and toast, and and they have the coal. And they have Everything coal. but a back rub, huh? Yeah. And so and so I would sit out on the on the deck of my balcony overlooking the, uh, the uh, Swiss Alps. <laughs> Incredibly, and I've got some pictures I'm going to send you because I Thank took you. Uh, from the porch, and I'm up about five floors. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, but one but one morning I was sitting there uh, after breakfast. I'm just sitting there, uh, I'm just uh, admiring the beauty of the Swiss Alps, and out I would say uh, approximately I don't know thirty or forty miles. Uh, away from the hotel was a very high mountain peak, uh, snow-covered mountain peak in the uh, in the Alps. Uh -huh. And I started, and for some reason, I decided to stare at that mountain peak. It was beautiful, but there was something about it that was uh, uh, attracting my attention. Hmm. And all of a sudden, three huge birds came out from behind the mountain peak. And started circling around the top of the mountain. They began to circle around the peak. Mm. But the point being is that if this was like 30 to 40 miles away, 
And these uh, birds, I would estimate uh, from where I was seeing them, that they were like a, maybe a quarter of an inch uh, wide and long. <clears throat> if you see a bird 40 miles away, which is a quarter inch wide and a quarter inch long, that is a big bird. Well, it's Griffith Park all over again. <laughs> yes, exactly what it was. I saw three pterodactyls circling uh, the, the mountain. Uh, I took a picture of it uh, with my with my uh, a phone picture, and <clears throat> I don't know. I've never been able to to really blow it up to see if I got anything. But I, but at least you'll see the mountain. And you'll see where I was, and I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll, I'll enlarge it. We'll see if we can see anything. Yeah. There. And so, uh, but I saw three pterodactyls circling around a mountain, uh, a snow-capped mountain peak, 30 to 40 miles away. And I'm just telling you, 